What's up, brother? Respect, man. Respect. <laughs> Welcome, everybody, to this impromptu live broadcast from the International Cannabis Business Conference here in San Francisco, California, ICBC San Francisco. And uh, I was just sitting here looking over at the uh, booth across from me, the folks out there at Freedom Leaf. And uh, who would come walking by but three-time NBA four time. champ? Four-time NBA champion. Oh, I remember why I messed that up. Four-time NBA champion, John Sally. One of two men to win three championships with three different teams. In three decades. Robert Ory being the other one, right? Right. Right on, man. Well, three different teams. I won in three decades and two millenniums. <laughs> you got it. You with got a the bad, <laughs> with, with <laughs> <laughs> never having any kind of cannabis, just Advil. Just Advil all that time. So I, it, that wasn't a thing back then in your day. No, it was the thing. I just didn't, I didn't do it. I found out. I was wondering why a lot of my teammates didn't hang out with me after playing. Right, right. Uh, it's because I obviously didn't partake in the – one, I didn't drink either. So yeah. uh, I didn't drink alcohol. So there was no reason for me to hang out. Well, I just like women. <laughs> well, with uh, uh, you know, cannabis and the association goes back – I mean, I recall back in the early 80s and uh, Kareem talking about it yeah. even. So uh, has this – has it always been something and it's just something you've become aware of recently? No, it's always been a thing. I remember when they would talk about people like Kareem would talk about cannabis and um, – People like uh, Robert Paris for the Celtics didn't talk about it, right, but right. then Chief. supposedly Chief, like, you know, that's the nickname, Chief. And, <laughs> that's a double meaning there. Yes. <laughs> and, and, and I would hear things, um, but then I, like, my, my last month of playing, yeah. I tried it. Yeah. And, um, and then I didn't do it again until I was 42. And then at 44, I became more of a, um, a smoker. Yeah. And now I'm 52 and I'm advocating. Yeah. yeah, I've often said that uh, once you hit AARP age, you ought yeah. to get a medical marijuana card automatically. That's what I say. You hit 50, man, it's <laughs> everything aches. Hey, somebody call that. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll make that happen. Uh, I've, I've, I've spoken with some uh, former players in the NFL, former NBA players, and, I always, and some mixed martial artists as yeah. well. And I always bring up the fact that, you know, the leagues tend to frown on cannabis use seemingly as a moral issue not as a performance enhancing issue but is there a performance enhancing aspect as far as being able to recover or pain relief or even slowing down time i'd imagine the nba that could be useful well the first thing is let me explain i i, I to this day think the steroid situation yeah in baseball is a ridiculous fight it's a ridiculous fight because what the steroids would be handed to you from a doctor if you wasn't a professional athlete to right. help you recover. Yeah. Right? Yeah. It's, it's supposed to be a miracle drug. But as an athlete, they don't want to help you recover. Yeah. So that's the first thing when we talk about steroids, which I didn't understand why there was even a concern. And then for people to concern themselves and say things about, well, this happens to your gonads and this that People don't care about athletes. <laughs> they, they can say they do. They yeah, don't. Yeah. So... When it comes down to the drugs, the drugs that we're administered over the counter, you may take one if you see a commercial because your back hurts. We take three every three in the morning and three before you play. So we're at six to seven of those. Yeah. So Matt, and that's to perform because we get paid to perform. Yeah. Not win, not lose, perform. So if you want professional athletes to perform because that's their job, Whatever it takes for them to perform is necessary. Mm -hmm. But if you want them to perform and continue to perform and give you the highest form of their performance, <laughs> the highest form of their performance, then what you should do is figure out how to do it naturally. And that's when I realized that this kind of cannabis was a natural way of doing it. It always strikes me as odd that we don't seem to have a problem with artificial mechanical fixes for sports be, be it you know tommy john surgery for pitchers or the batting armor that they wear or which whatever. makes them better yeah which makes them better but a chemical fix we don't we frown on that we see it's a, a natural fix they do like the chemical fix they'll, they'll let you take vicodin yeah. and and they'll let you get hooked on on pharmaceuticals but they don't want you if you're not hooked if they don't have an angle to play against you they they don't want you when you're self-sufficient and critical thinking in any part of industry in America. Sure. They don't want critical 
thinkers. George Carlin once said, right. uh, <laughs> we want them smart enough to run the machines, dumb enough to accept their lot in life. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> exactly. So uh, what's your angle on this being here at ICBC? I, I understood you invested in the cannabis uh, Yeah, and I'm a, I'm a shareholder in Canopy uh, Canada, and my daughter and I started our own um, line. So it's the John Sally. It's called Deuces. My number is 22. Sure. Uh, we're released March 15th throughout the country. Right now we have 54 dispensaries, and uh, we just met with a distributor that can get me into over 100 or 500 dispensaries. I need to be in every dispensary. I told them, they said, who do you want to be? I said, I want to be as recognizable as Coca-Cola, but the business sense of Pepsi-Cola. <laughs> Very nice. Very little, maybe some Ben and Jerry's ethics, some, some yeah. you know, give back to the community. More than that. Yeah. It's more than giving back to the community. It's literally making a community because I didn't take anything from the community. So giving back to them would be if I took something from them. Ah. I'm enhancing the community. And this is what they need to realize. The liquor store on the corner does not enhance your community. Mm -hmm. The Seven Eleven, uh, the, the, the Taco Bell, the Subway, all these fast food joints, which cause us to take menial paying jobs, demeaning jobs, because people go in there and treat you like garbage. Food that's not really good for you to develop is literally killing your community. This is different. Everybody in this business, you could live in a neighborhood and work in a neighborhood, and if somebody, you can steal. There's no reason to steal from a dispensary. There's, everything is almost free anyway. Yeah. So it trains the community different. We don't have to steal from one another. We don't have to over, we don't have to kick the situations out like, He's trying to steal from me. He's trying to... No. Everybody will look out for you. It gives you a better feeling. Yeah. People rob liquor stores because they're angry. They got liquid courage. They also rob dispensaries, but they get caught because they move slow. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's something our, our opponents, uh, uh, opponents of marijuana legalization bring up is they'll say, well, you know, it's, it's going to be like big tobacco. It's going to be like big alcohol. They're going to prey on minority communities. They have a, a liquor store in every corner. It's going to be a right. pot shop in every corner. And I always say, I'd rather have a pot shop on the corner than a dealer. Yeah. You know, the pot shop's not going to shoot it out over a dispute. He's not. And, he, and, and, and no one's going to say, get off my corner. I... <laughs> It's uh, brick and mortar. And I got a license. Yeah. <laughs> and it, that's another thing. If we can show, I, I'm part of the things I'm going to speak about today, but we give it you know, to you fresh. Thank you. Is there's close to 400 to 600,000 black men and women in jail because of their dealings in marijuana, which they want to say narcotics. We don't say that. Dealing in marijuana. And when in some states, when they get out, because of their a record, they won't be able to work in this industry, which is now going like wildfire. Yep. And that's a shame. That's the same that the pioneers who got all the arrows won't get any of the feast. Mm -hmm. So I have to figure out a way. As Jay Z said, uh, I'm getting the record labels back for what they did to the Cold Crush. Meaning the reason I'm making this money and changing this is because we have been destroyed. So early and yeah. i'm gonna figure out a way to employ certain people yeah especially if they've spent time in the prison system in america that's great news to hear and, and it, it reaches so deeply beyond even economics i always point out the case that uh in florida 21 grams of cannabis is a felony you get a felony in florida you lose your right to vote for life right uh, who gets busted the most for cannabis african americans that's right this has led to a situation in florida where one out of five black men of voting age cannot vote in that state had they been able to vote we'd have had a president gore and probably another president clinton if they were allowed to vote um president obama would have been reelected. We would have changed the rules. <laughs> we would repeal the 22nd Amendment. Yeah, the yeah. rules would have been wonderful. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, man, I appreciate it. Thank you so it. much, John Sally, for stopping by here. Uh, you're speaking later today with uh, Steve Bloom, like 430, I believe, right? Right. right. Fantastic. Yeah, that's why I had to get to you first, give you on a down stop. That's right. Thanks for joining us here, and uh, we'll be back at 3 o'clock live here on the Russ Belleville Show. Peace out, everybody, and we'll see you at the after party. Yes. Right on.